All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Fabulous. I'm out here walking and talking. I don't think I've missed a day of of walking um, in a while. Yesterday I double walked, and that's one of the things I want to talk about today. Um, this queue line in Detroit. So I volunteered for it because I had been hearing about it. It's been being worked on. And I'm trying to understand now, well, how did this work? What's up with the queue line? So um, I saw there was a, you know, a volunteer thing. So I'm like, oh, let me volunteer. And then I'll know from the inside, quote unquote, <laughs> from the inside out, what's really going on. I'm going to go try to find me some tea, understand, get the uh, propaganda so I can try to analyze it and fit it into my life. So I'm not exactly in the target market for the queue line because it seems to me that the queue line is marketed toward um, people who live, um, you know, from the live and work from the boulevard down. So um, in the queue line is a streetcar system here in Detroit. I guess we haven't had one since 1950. We have no. Um, we have public transportation, but no effective or really working public transportation i think that you can get around by public transportation if you have to but it, it it seems to be a really jacked up system when i lived in new york you could really get around by public transportation when i stayed in toronto for a minute you could it seemed like i could get around well enough on public transportation now you know i was basically you know not trying to do any um but yeah i could get around on public transportation but in detroit it seems like it's always a struggle to get around on public transportation. And primarily because it seems like it's targeted toward people who can't afford cars. So it's like a, um, uh, it's not a system for everybody. It's a junk system for poor people, you know. So I was curious about, you know, kind of what, what what's the situation with the queue line? So, um, you know, when I started reading the, the little stuff as I was getting prepared to volunteer. I'm like, oh, to my mother, we could take the queue line down to the museum. Oh, I think it's a free day at the museum today. I've been wanting to see that main exhibit for about four months, four or five months now, but I've been in shows on Sundays. Um, we could take the queue line down to the museum. Oh, if there were still ethnic festivals, we could take the queue line down to the ethnic festivals. My mama's like, well, why would we take the queue line instead of the bus? I'm like, uh, uh, cause it's the queue line. So, you know, she kind of, it kind of got me, you know, like, yeah, what's the, what's, what's the difference between the queue line and what's already there? And basically that's kind of, you know, what I got is that it's a duplicate service. There's already service that covers that area, but there's such a stigma attached to that service that certain people who come downtown on a temporary basis would not use that service. Um, certain people who come downtown on a temporary basis would not use that service. And certain people who they're trying to attract to live in that area and who now live in that area are not comfortable using that service because too many regular poor Detroiters use that service. So that's kind of what I got from it that, you know, it's a service designed for people who, you know, are uncomfortable riding public transportation with black, brown, and poor people. But it was, you know, it was cute. Um, you know, I did learn something of the politics of, um, I, I can't say I learned, I just became aware that there was some politics attached to um, the people mover that initially, the people mover, which really is a small area. I don't even know. The um, queue line covers three miles, 3.3 miles one way and 3.3 miles the other way. And I think the people mover is an even smaller um, area than that. Um, but initially, the people mover was supposed to um, expand beyond just the small area of downtown Detroit. And I've heard some conversation of that with the queue line. But I think that even if it doesn't expand, since they put all these um, sports arenas and things downtown to attract people in from the suburbs, if they can disperse where they're parking instead of having them all concentrate 
you know, in half a mile area, if they can have them concentrate in a three mile area, it means that traffic and, and movement will be easier for them and more comfortable for them and more convenient for them. And for those people who have moved into that area um, as gentrifiers, um, then it'll be more comfortable for them. They won't be as congested and they'll be able to move in their the walkable community that's being designed for them in downtown Detroit, they'll be able to move through there without having to interact with us regular black folks. So, um, you know, that's what I got. And actually, it was the, um, I volunteered on two separate days, not intentionally. I only intended to volunteer on one day. And once I went to the orientation, I'm like, I don't even need to volunteer because I think I found out what I found, what I was going to find out. But, um, dang, I was going to say something. Um, about something else but now i can't even remember what it is but um yeah that's the queue line dang i wish i could say everything that i thought about the queue line in this one little thing and get it out oh but i was going to say that transportation was a little bit of a mess um now you know it's free oh so then this is the other little piece of tea it's free and now until the 22nd of this month what is this may june i don't even know what, what but it's free till the 22nd of this month so they've expanded the free service beyond this weekend um, till all of next week so you you know you can get an opportunity to ride it but when I was working it it was it was theoretically it's supposed to roll every 20 to 25 minutes through a station um, I was at you know sometimes it was running every five to eight minutes and then sometimes it was running every 40 minutes and sometimes it was like you know people were waiting for an hour if they felt like waiting um, so I don't I guess they were supposed to be working out the kinks um, but anyway, that's what I got. Q line Detroit. And I really want to look up, is it the Detroit Freedom Riders who were protesting? I didn't get a chance to talk to them the first day when I was leaving. They were coming in and I was like, oh, the Q lines, the Q line. I really want to talk to them. I want the tea. I want to, you know, but I had read a little article kind of talking about the fact that, you know, it represents investment in, you know, the non people of Detroit, um, the people who ain't been here um, and who just come in, you know, to, you know, uh, just come in to leave come in um, to leave so um, yeah check out Freedom Riders Detroit for more information um, Q Lino oh, it should be digitally online I think they have an app um, and that's what I got have you written what do you think um, we had one person ride down the street and yell out you're stupid when we were standing on the thing volunteering I was with a, a, um, a white man that day who um, that's a whole nother conversation I think I want to um, talk a little bit about a couple of the people that I met while I was um, doing this volunteer service. I did see one of my um, regular volunteer mamas, Mama Regina, who does um, foraging in the city. And I see her volunteering at quite a couple, well, I can't say quite a few things, but I see her volunteering at the um, Riverwalk Detroit. Um, so I was like, I wonder if she's gonna be volunteering. And she was, you know, she's like a high level volunteer. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what I got. Q-Line Detroit, what you think about it? What you, you been on it? Uh, what are your thoughts? What's, what's the tea? All right. Thanks for watching. Fabulous. Be you. Be fabulous. Be fabulous you. Peace.